Hi, we are the Doctors Bjorkman. We're a physician couple that has spent the last year going week by week from trying to conceive through our pregnancy and now our life as new parents sharing that with you. Yeah, and through this process, we've done a couple episodes on COVID and the COVID vaccine specifically. Um, but as time keeps going, we've had some more and more questions about should people be getting the vaccines. So this week, we are going to cover the eight reasons that you might consider not getting the vaccine. If this is your first time meeting us, I'm Sarah. I'm a board certified OBGYN and first time mom. Now, I'm Kurt. I'm a board certified pediatrician and first time dad. And, and we, we are, are the, the Doctors Bjorkman. Welcome back. We need to start out this week by saying that we know there are many people who are hesitant about getting vaccinated. Maybe that's you or maybe that's someone that you love. Yeah. And it is okay to be hesitant about something that feels new or something that you maybe are getting conflicting reports about from friends, family, social media, or the news. So our goal is to go through some of the reasons you might have for not getting vaccinated and to talk about the current data and evidence we have about COVID and the COVID-19 vaccines. We're going to share our personal feelings um, and decisions along the way, but most importantly, we want you to have the most up-to-date evidence, the facts, so that you can make an informed decision about what is best for you and your family. Yeah. Our duty as physicians is to first do no harm, to do good when possible, and then to give our patients the autonomy to make their own medical decisions. We want you to know that these themes are overarching everything we bring to you here on YouTube and are most certainly at the heart of this week's episode. Number one, COVID isn't a big risk to me. So as doctors, we are constantly trying to balance risks and benefits mm -hmm. of our actions. So it makes perfect sense for someone to ask themselves, you know, what is the risk of COVID for me? Yeah. So as of August 15th, 2021, mm -hmm. the age-related risk of death from COVID for people 18 to 29 years of age mm -hmm. was 0.06% or six deaths out of every 10,000 COVID cases. Mm -hmm. For people in their 30s, that risk goes up to 0.17% or 17 deaths for every 10,000 cases. And for those in their 40s, that risk is 0.45% or 45 deaths for every 10,000 cases. Yeah. Overall, what this means is that the risk of death from COVID is about the f same as the risk of death from the flu for those less than 20 years of age. Mm -hmm. By the time someone is over the age of 30, that risk starts to go up significantly mm -hmm. um, and then is markedly higher for those above the age of 50. In fact, for people who get COVID and are of above the age of 75, yeah. the risk of death from a case of COVID is one in five. However, death isn't the only thing to consider here. We think it's important to think about the risk of hospitalization, the risk of needing to be in an ICU, mm -hmm. the risk of having inflammation around your heart, and the risks of those long-term COVID symptoms, sometimes called the long hauler COVID symptoms. Yeah. For the age group of people 18 to 49 years of age, which encompasses most of women of childbearing age, mm -hmm. that risk of hospitalization is 3.4% per case, which is about one in 30. And additionally, there was a British study done in April that surveyed 20,000 people who had previously had COVID. And what that study found was that 20% of people were still reporting symptoms five weeks after they had the infection. And 13% or one in seven people were still reporting symptoms three months after they had their infection. So maybe this data to you tells you, you know what, the risk of me dying from this disease is incredibly low. Mm -hmm. And the rate of hospitalization being one out of 30 cases for my age group really doesn't bother me that much. Okay. Um, what we want to stress here also, though, is that these risks are dramatically higher if you're pregnant. Yeah. Um, or even if the risks to you personally are low, um, the risk could be very high for someone that you could spread it to. So the infective rate um, for the Delta variant, what we call in science the R0, mm -hmm. um, is five, somewhere between five and nine. So what that means is that if you get COVID, you are likely to infect five to nine other people. So don't just consider the risk of COVID to you. Also think about the five to nine people you might spread it to and what their risk is. We also know that pregnant women who get a COVID infection while they're pregnant do worse than non-pregnant women who are their same age. 
Two big studies were published in the last month that looked at the outcomes of these pregnant women with COVID. And to summarize what they found, um, pregnant women in the hospital with COVID-19 were four to six times more likely to need to go to the ICU. Mm -hmm. They were 12 to 14 times more likely to be intubated or need a breathing tube to help them breathe. And they were 15 to 17 times more likely to die from their COVID-19 infection. Yep. And these aren't the only complications that these women suffered. They also saw higher rates of kidney failure, mm -hmm. of blood clots, and serious cardiac events. Yep. Um, also, these women were 20 to 50% more likely to have preterm birth. Mm -hmm. um, and there have also been multiple other studies that have looked at placentas of women who have had COVID while pregnant and saw evidence of malperfusion to the placenta that supplies the blood flow directly to the developing baby. So you might be uncertain about getting the vaccine, um, and that's okay. Uh, I got vaccinated in the second trimester of pregnancy um, back in January, right when it was kind of authorized for healthcare workers. And there wasn't a lot of data at the time, and we had to make a decision based on what we know about the history of vaccines and how vaccines work. Um, and that, you know, we weighed the risks and benefits for me, and we knew and we know that COVID is really dangerous and the vaccine. Um, could protect me from getting COVID and also protect this little nug. Um, so as a pregnant woman, I know you want to do everything that, you know, is best for your baby and your pregnancy. And right now, all of the major OB organizations are recommending um, you get the vaccine as soon as you can during your pregnancy. Um, I would you know, from this mama heart to yours, I would encourage you to get the vaccine. If you're hesitant, talk to people um, that are qualified to talk about um, the risks and benefits of getting this vaccine for you. Talk to your OBGYN because um, you want to do everything you can to protect your little nugget. So this is our, you know, vaccine baby and she is wonderful and we just wanted you to meet her. If you have any questions, please, please leave them in the comments. We are so happy to talk to you. Um, about this decision and making one that's good for you and your family and your little babe. So. Reason number two, the vaccines don't work that well. So you've probably heard that the COVID vaccines aren't as effective against the new Delta variant of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and this is true. Instead of being 94 to 96% effective at preventing any infection from COVID, uh, the Pfizer vaccine is somewhere between 39 and 64% effective against Delta variant. And the Moderna vaccine is about 76% effective at preventing any form of COVID infection. So why would you get a vaccine if you could still get COVID? Mm -hmm. um, and the answer here is twofold. Um, first, the vaccines are still good enough um, at reducing the infection rate that it dramatically slows the spread of infection from person to person. Um, secondly, the vaccines are still incredibly effective at preventing severe disease and hospitalization. Mm -hmm. um, what we are finding is that over these summer months, um, upwards of 95% of people who are hospitalized are people who are unvaccinated. And so that includes people that were hesitant to get the vaccine, as well as kids who are still too young to get the vaccine. Yeah. So getting the vaccine not only reduces your chance of getting COVID in the first place, but almost certainly will keep you out of the hospital if you get COVID. Reason number three, you may have heard that the vaccine is dangerous or experimental. Um, so if that is how you feel, we hear you. It is hard when these things feel new or different. Um, if that's you, go back and check out some of our earlier videos where we talked about the vaccine and how it works and what went into getting us to this point. Um, but for now, let's give some updates of things that have happened since these vaccines got their emergency authorization use back in December of 2020. Yeah. So, so since that time in the U.S., more than 190 million people have received at least one dose of the vaccine or about 60% of the population, with about 50% of the population being completely vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And worldwide, 4.9 billion doses have been administered, which equates to about 25 to 30% of the world population getting at least one dose. So that's a huge amount of people who have received this vaccine, and it gives us so much data to look at the effectiveness of the vaccine. 
and also to look for rare side effects and complications. Uh, and as of this week, uh, the Pfizer vaccine has received full yeah. FDA approval for yeah. use in the U.S. Correct. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. And it's amazing that this vaccine has gone through the rigorous process of testing, evaluation, and a whole lot of red tape to get here. Uh, you may be interested to know that many dietary supplements, like even vitamin D, don't have to go through this rigorous process of approval through the FDA. Some other important things to know about vaccine safety. So, it does not alter your DNA. Um, it gives instructions uh, to the cells in your body to make spike proteins that resemble the COVID-19 spike protein uh, for a few short days. And that allows your body to... In your immune system to... To, to build a, an immune response that would then be able to fight off an infection if you were exposed to it somewhere down the road. Yeah. Now, there have absolutely been consequences of vaccination that have been seen. Yep. Um, these are rare, but you should know about those, and we think it's important. Yep. Um, in pediatric cardiology, or something that I've actually seen and cared for myself, is myocarditis, or inflammation of the heart muscle, um, that has occurred in some people after vaccination. Yep. Um, in the U.S., that rate has been, it's occurred in about 1,200 people after mm -hmm. vaccination, yep. with the people that are at most highest risk are males between the ages of 12 and 29 years of age. So 1,200 of the 190 million that have been vaccinated. Absolutely. You might ask, how could we recommend a vaccine that could cause something like this? Um, and so that goes back to weighing the risks and benefits again. Mm -hmm. So vaccinating just this highest risk group of males, so age 12 to 29, could potentially cause 40 to 45 cases of myocarditis um, that from what we've seen is self-limited and doesn't have long lasting effects. Yeah. But vaccinating this same group in the U.S. could potentially prevent 11,000 cases of COVID, 560 hospitalizations, 138 ICU admissions, and six deaths. We know that so many of the decisions people make about their health are related to how the people they trust feel. Mm -hmm. um, and so here is a little information about people we hope that you have trust and confidence in. As of June of 2021, 96% of U.S. physicians have been vaccinated. Yeah, these are the people you would trust to catch a baby, to yep. care for you when you're sick, mm -hmm. to perform surgery if you needed. These are the U.S.'s medical experts who have dedicated at least seven years of training and time to become board-certified physicians. Yeah. So nearly all of the doctors in the U.S., us included, mm -hmm. have decided that these vaccines are safe and effective enough for us to choose to get them personally. Reason number four, I'm pregnant. Yeah, so we've already covered the risk that COVID infection plays on pregnant women and how high those risks are, but maybe your concern is not for yourself, but could this affect, could getting the vaccine affect my placenta or my developing baby? The short answer here is no. As of the middle of August 2021, more than 148,000 pregnant women have gotten the vaccine, myself included. We know that that vaccine doesn't leave your delt, mm -hmm. um, and so it is not crossing the placenta, it is never getting to the baby. What we do know, however, though, is those antibodies that you make, that your immune system makes, those protective antibodies, do cross the placenta to the baby. That's a good thing, mm -hmm. um, as baby then has some protection from COVID-19 after they're born. Yeah. The other thing you may wonder about, what about miscarriage rates? And so there's actually a new study that's coming out that's in preprint currently that looked at almost 2,500 women who got the COVID vaccine um, bef well pregnant, but before 20 weeks. And they found in this group, the rate of miscarriage was about the same as seen in the population. Being in the study group, there was about a 13% rate of miscarriage. Um, whereas in general population, we usually quote about 11 to 16% rate of miscarriage. And that is consistent with the study that was published in the New England Journal that looked at 35,000 pregnant women who had gotten the vaccine, and it found a similar rate of miscarriage in the women who got the vaccine as is found in the general population of what we expect to see for miscarriage. So reason number five, what if you're breastfeeding? 
We've been asked this question numerous times, you know, is it safe to breastfeed after vaccination? And as someone who is breastfeeding, has been vaccinated and has a new baby at home, I couldn't be more excited to have gotten that vaccine and then be breastfeeding. Um, because what studies have shown is that those protective antibodies are found in the breast milk and then that by breastfeeding, you are passing some of those antibodies to your baby, which may provide some level of protection and immunity for those sweet babies who can't yet get the vaccine. Yeah, and we know that this is especially important because the rates of hospitalization and death are higher in children less than one year of age from COVID as compared to older children. So studies looking at some concerns about breastfeeding and the vaccine have found that, one, the vaccine does not reach the breast milk. Um, number two, um, protective antibodies have been found in the breast milk as soon as two weeks after vaccination and seem to peak at the four week mark. Um, and finally, studies have looked at breast milk supply after getting the vaccine and they have not found a significant decrease in your supply. Reason number six you might be hesitant about getting vaccinated is maybe you're worried about the effects of the vaccine on fertility. And there is absolutely no evidence to support this claim. Um, in fact, some really nice studies have been done in my um, subspecialty, which is reproductive endocrinology and infertility, so have been done in the IVF world, that show that there is no difference um, in implantation rates um, in patients who got the vaccine versus those who did not. Yeah. And also there doesn't seem to be any effect on male fertility with no change in sperm count after vaccination. Correct. So because of all of this information that we have gotten in the past months, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, as well as SMFM, the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, came out on July 30th and said that they recommend that pregnant women get the vaccine. ASRM, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, so those are your fertility specialists, also recommend pregnant women, women trying to conceive, women who are breastfeeding also get the vaccine. Reason number seven, what about any possible long-term effects of vaccination? So 100% understand where that concern comes from and here is what science tells us about it. Um, the reaction to the vaccine is really happening in those first days to weeks after you get it. And because of that big immune response, that is when we expect to see any big side effects or complications. Um, that's how it's been with this vaccine and other vaccines in history is that within the first two months of a vaccine is when we see those complications. Yeah. And so it is possible you have one of those rare complications of vaccination that we see in that acute phase. Yep. Um, for instance, myocarditis, um, we know can happen from COVID, mm -hmm. um, but can happen from the vaccine too. Right. And as we talked about earlier, the risk in that highest risk group of males 12 to 29 years of age, yep. the rate of myocarditis that's been seen in those patients after vaccination is about 60 in 1 million vaccinated, which is a risk of 0.006%. Yeah. However, in people who are roughly the same age, college age students who got COVID, the risk and rate of myocarditis in those patients uh, was 2.3%. That's 575 times more likely to get myocarditis from a COVID infection than from a vaccine. So we understand that there's uncertainty about the unknown future after vaccination. However, there is absolute certainty about the risks of COVID yes. and many of those symptoms are real and long lasting. Reason number eight, I've already had COVID. Yeah, so the discussion about getting a vaccine after a prior infection is a little bit nuanced yeah. because we know that having been infected before is gonna reduce your risk of getting COVID again because of natural immunity. Right. However, we also know that getting a vaccine after a prior infection is gonna boost your immunity to future infection. It also gives you some added protection against other variants of the virus compared to the one that you got when you were first infected. So for us, we would still strongly recommend that our loved ones get the COVID vaccine even if they had been infected before because of that added protection it may offer. Um, but if this is you, it's a great thing to sit down and talk with your doctor about to kind of weigh those personal risk-benefit ratio. 
that's going to be it for us this week. Hopefully, as we went through these eight reasons, you might be hesitant about getting the vaccine. It's really helped you understand what evidence and information is there for you to make that informed and autonomous decision that's going to be best for you. Yeah, we will link all of the studies that we mentioned um, here in the description, and they were on the screen as we mm -hmm. talked about them. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We are happy to have a kind um, discussion with you all anytime. Okay. See, you See you guys next week. week. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.